Hello everyone, it is Thursday, February 26th. This article taken from Market Watch Opinion. Brett Arends. Opinion. Pope Francis must answer questions about church's financial dealings with Hitler. A new book, God's Bankers, sheds light on the Vatican Bank and the Nazis. By Brett Arends, columnist. There he is. The first Jesuit Pope. Pope Francis. He says, It's time for Pope Francis to confess His Holiness... And by the way, he's not holy. He's just a man. Has said he wants to bring a new era of openness and light to the Roman Catholic Church. Good for him. He can start by at last throwing open the Vatican's secret records about its shady dealings with Hitler, Mussolini, and their allies before, during, and after World War II. What did the Vatican know about the Holocaust and other atrocities taking place? How much did it cover up? And most of all, how much did it profit from them? Those issues have been given new life by the publication of Gerald Posner's new book, God's Bankers, A History of Money and Power and the Vatican, which details for the first time all that we do know about the financial shenanigans in the Holy See from that time. But it is tantalizing how much remains buried in the Vatican's so-called secret archive, hidden from private prying eyes. These are not private or confidential Roman Catholic Church matters that have no business being aired in public. These are directly related to the Church's conduct during and after the war, as a moral authority in the world, a sovereign state, an investor, and as an offshore bank. Here are the questions that Postner's book raises, and which the Pope should answer, if he seriously wants to be considered the people's Pope. The scale of the Vatican's financial entanglements raises too many questions for us to ignore. How much money did the Vatican receive each year from Hitler, in the guise of the so-called Kirchnistur? Kirchnistur, or church tax, which he levied on its behalf in the Reich. Postner finds that this tax came to $1.7 billion in today's money in 1943 alone. How far did that influence Pope Pius XII's infamous policy of silence about the rising atrocities against Jews and others throughout occupied Europe, atrocities of which the Vatican received the first direct eyewitness evidence as early as 1941? How much money did the Vatican make by investing in Italian munich, mun, munitions manufacturers in the 1930s at the start of Mussolini's war, wars of conquest and slaughter, wars that the Church initially blessed? How did the Vatican choose to invest in big Italian insurance companies after Mussolini purged them of Jewish owners and board members, but not Jewish customers? And how much did senior figures at the Church know about those companies' policy of denying life insurance claims for Holocaust victims during the 1940s on the grounds that the body, families couldn't produce a body. How much gold, looted by Nazis and fascists from occupied Europe, made its way into the vaults of the Vatican Bank at the end of the war? What happened to that gold afterward? Did any of it go to South America to support the lifestyles of death camp commanders and gas chamber operators who had been helped to escape by the so-called rat line run by sympathetic priests. Were U.S. intelligent reports which described a convoy of trucks loaded with gold arriving in St. Peter's Square accurate or not? And why did the Vatican refuse to join with the Swiss banks and others in making settlements with survivor groups and heirs in the 1990s? Maybe there are innocent explanations for many of these questions, but they can't be dismissed with a wave of the hand. The scale of the Vatican's financial entanglements raises too many questions for us to ignore, and these involve moral imperatives. As early as March of 1942, a guilt-ridden SS officer went to the Catholic Bishop of Berlin and gave him the first detailed account of systematic, industrialized death camp operations at Belzec. The shocked and horrified bishop sent the information to the Vatican, both by diplomatic pouch and by encoded telegram, yet the information apparently wasn't broadcast or shared with other countries. If not, why not? The Vatican had a gigantic network of priests in every town across Poland, ground zero for death squads and the Holocaust, how much was reported back and when. 
the Vatican has steadfastly refused to answer those questions, I tried again last week with both the office of the new CEO in Washington and the Media Relations Department in Rome, but received no response. If that changes, I will update this article. Pope Francis will be visiting America in September. The president, the media, and other public figures ought to stand shoulder to shoulder with Jewish groups and insist that if he wants to be held for his openness and candor, he has to be open and candid first. And that is the end of the article. I would suggest purchasing this book, God's Bankers, by Brett Arends, and looking at the wickedly evil history of this Roman Catholic Church and this evil, evil, wicked institution. Have a great day, everyone.